Hi, in this video, I'm looking at taking some complex numbers and having them from being in Cartesian form or rectangular form and converting them into polar form or trig form, whichever way you want to think about it. Now, polar form is basically if I've got a, cart a complex number, Z, which is some A plus B, I, the polar form is the magnitude of Z or the modulus of Z and an angle of the argument of Z. And the trigonometric form is where Z is written as the magnitude of Z cos the argument of Z, which I'm just going to put as theta this time, plus I times the magnitude of Z sine the argument which is quite often shortened to the magnitude of Z cis the argument. So we're going to have a look at doing this for a few complex numbers. So let's have a look at our first one. Our first one is going to be 4 minus 6i. So Z equals 4 minus 6i. And I want to look at converting this to a polar form or trig form. So the magnitude of this complex number, if I think about drawing it as a vector, well, that'll be 4 real and negative 6 imaginary. So that would be a vector down like that. And that means if I use my right angle triangle maths, I can use Pythagoras and find out that length of my line, which is the modulus or the magnitude. So we're going to have the square root of 4 squared plus negative 6 squared. And so if we work that out, we get root 52, which if we simplify the third, will give us 2 root 13. So that's the magnitude. And then to get the argument of Z, well, that means that I want to know what is this angle in here, which means I've got the opposite and the adjacent side. And so I want to use tan, or in this case, inverse tan of the opposite, which is the imaginary part. So I'll write that as B for the imaginary part, because B and A over the real. So I've got inverse tan of my imaginary part, negative 6, over my real part, 4. And that's going to be inverse tan of negative 3 over 2. And this is not a perfect answer, or an exact answer ratio, so we'll just put that into our calculator. And the inverse tan of negative 3 over 2 in a calculator is negative 0.9828 in radians. And so that means that if I check my angle, well, I'm getting a negative angle, which means I'm coming back here, of negative 9.28, which means that's a good angle. We have to check our tan angles because sometimes, especially if we're in quadrant 2 or quadrant 3, we have to check our angles from tan to make sure they're correct. But this one is fine. So that means I can write my complex number in polar form. If I want to write it in polar form, it'll be 2 root 13 angle negative 0 0.9828. Or in trig form, which is more common, 2 root 13 cis negative 0.9828. So that's our final answer. And generally we write it as the cis form, the trig form, but sometimes you will see it in polar form. So let's go and have a look at another example. So my second example is what if Z is negative five plus five root three I. So we just do the same process. We'll get the magnitude through doing the square root of negative 5 plus 5 root 3. Whoops, and I forgot to square both of those. It's a bit of Pythagoras, which, if we work this out, is going to give us the square root of 100. So that means that our magnitude is 10. And getting the argument of our complex number, well, that's going to be inverse 10 of our imaginary 5 root 3 over our real negative 5. And so if we get simplify that, we've got inverse 10 of negative root 3 over 1. And this should be an exact value question. So let's draw a quick triangle 
of our pi on 6, pi on 3, 1, 2, root 3. And so what angle has an opposite, because remember this is opposite over adjacent, opposite of root 3, well this one is opposite of root 3, adjacent of 1. So that means that we've got pi on 3, but that's the positive angle. If I think about drawing, so that would mean that this is giving us pi on 3. But as the positive angle, if I draw a quick sketch of my complex number, I've got negative 5 in the real and positive 5 root 3 in the imaginary. So my complex number is up there. And 10 at the moment, this pi on 3 would be this angle, but I've got negative pi on 3, which means I'm actually down here. So 10 is giving me this pi on 3 here because this negative means that I'm down here, negative pi on 3. And so I just need to look at how do I get this to actually be this angle, because I want to know what is this angle rather than this angle, because my actual complex number is up here, not down here, so I can't use this angle. Well, of course, that means that I'm going to have to have pi on 3 and add on a pi, because I'm pi away from where I need to be. So if I do that, pi on 3, add on a pi, whoops, sorry, I'm negative pi on 3, add on a pi, because we had a negative angle, this is a negative angle. So negative pi on 3 plus a pi would be 2 pi on 3. So that's given us the argument of z. So then writing that in, let's just go straight to the trig form, that's going to be 10 cis 2 pi on 3 as our final answer. Let's have a look at another example. So let's have a bit of a move down here. And let's have a look at my third one, which is going to be, what if I have z equals negative 8 take 5i? Well, doing the same thing, magnitude of z is going to be the square root of negative 8 squared plus negative 5 squared. Putting that into our calculator, we get, neg uh, we get root 89. And that doesn't simplify as a third, so we'll just leave our magnitude as that. Having a look at the argument, argument of z is going to be the inverse 10 of in our real negative 5 over, sorry, our imaginary negative 5 over our real, which is going to give us uh, the inverse 10 of 5 over 8. And putting that into our calculator, we will get 0 0.5585 radians. Now we've got to do a quick check though, make sure this is the correct angle. So if we draw our complex number, I've got negative 8 real, negative 5 imaginary. So my complex number is down here. But I've got the positive angle from 10 of 0 0.5585. Now that means that I am off again by pi. Now I've just got to, well if I did my previous trick of add pi to get back to here, then I would have gone over pi. We always want our modulus to be between negative pi and pi, positively equal to pi, or less than negative pi, or greater than negative pi, I should say. So if I cross over, if I go this way, I'm going to get more than pi, because this is an angle of pi to here, pi plus another 0.55 radians is going to be bigger than pi. So I actually want to go this way. I want to subtract off pi to be able to get to where we want. So I'm going to minus off pi and get an argument of negative 2.58. And so that means our complex number z is going to be root 89 cis negative 2.58. And my final question is, what if we got the complex number z equals negative root 3 plus i? 
And so if we go through, let's get the argument of z square root of negative root 3 squared plus 1 squared, which is going to be the square root of 4, which will mean that we've got 2. And then having a look at our argument of this complex number, we're going to have inverse tan of we have our imaginary first, which is 1, over our real negative root 3, which when we simplify moves that negative up, but it doesn't really matter. I'm actually going to leave that negative where it is because it helps me work out the angle better. So I've got a real, uh, an exact value scenario here. So I'm going to draw my pi on 6, pi on 3, 1, 2, root 3 triangle. And now I need the angle where my opposite is 1 and my adjacent is root 3. So this has got my opposite of 1, my adjacent of root 3. So my angle is pi on 6, but that's the equivalent positive angle. But I've got a negative root 3. So if I have a look at my diagram, so my complex number is negative root 3 real and positive 1 imaginary. So my complex number is up here. Tan has given us the positive angle pi on 6, but because I've got this negative up here, it actually means I've got negative pi on 6. So this is giving me negative pi on 6. But I want the angle around to this line here, which means that I've got to add on pi. So I'll add on pi, and that will give us a final argument of negative pi on 6 plus pi. Well, that's going to be 5 pi on 6 for our argument of z. So that means that my final answer for our complex number z is 2 cis 5 pi on 6. And that's it. We're done. So if we're trying to convert a complex number from Cartesian form, a plus bi, into polar or trig form, we use Pythagoras to get the magnitude and inverse tan of imaginary over real to get the argument. But we've got to be careful because tan doesn't always give us the angle we need. So we've got to look at what our complex number is when we draw it, especially if we are in quadrant two or three and get the correct angle by adding or subtracting pi, remembering, of course, that all of our complex numbers want the argument to be between negative pi and pi.